And now we have Peter Winchell, who's a, a very strong member in the community for the spiritual ascension and the 5D reality. He's been on the spiritual path since the early 60s uh, when he was initiated into transcendental meditation and then has continued on a very dedicated spiritual path ever since then. He's been one of the leaders in the 5D community in Marin that has really brought together a lot of people. So, Peter, can you share with us your perspective on the ascension process happening right now? First, I want to say what a pleasure it is to be here and an honor to be on this panel with these beautiful souls. Um, I'm involved with a couple of different streams of information from 5D. I haven't heard anybody else referring to them, so what I'd like to do is, because I don't think any single model can capture the vastness of what's going on, perhaps with different perspectives, bring out different pieces of it and we get a fuller picture. I joined the Eureka School in the early 70s, founded by Oscar Achazo, and at that time Oscar was saying, it's time to jump or die. We have to jump our level of consciousness or die because we're faced by potential killers of humanity that our current consciousness cannot deal with. We're too fractured and ignorant and competitive. And Oscar was talking about preparing for the wave. There was going to come a wave of consciousness to lift us all and propel us into new states of awareness. Gordon's talking about this certainly in different terms. So it's clear that for ages, the spiritual hierarchy, the White Brotherhood, the Ascended Masters knew this was an essential part of a conscious race coming to maturity and we were going to face this threshold of jump or die. Another group I've been connected with is the Michael Teachings. Michael is a group of a thousand souls who've graduated from the earth. They learned all their lessons, burned all their karma, cycled off the earth, and they reunited on the astral plane, and then they moved to the mid-causal, where they started teaching, channeling information in the 80s. It's a broad, vast, deep teaching. If you haven't heard of the Michael teachings, I recommend Chelsea Quinn Yarborough. I, re I learn something every day. I read part of the Michael teachings. One of the things they talk about are soul ages. A human being in evolving on the earth goes through different ages that are analogous to a human, an individual human life. There are infant souls, just as there are newborn infants who can't feed themselves or move around very well. There are baby souls that are beginning to crawl, get a little bit of movement, and can have a little bit more self-motivation. There are young or adolescent souls who are gung-ho and ready to go and take on the world. Those are the ones that are really most involved in winning the game getting the most money, getting the position, getting the power. There are then mature souls who begin to look inward, like adults have a different perspective on the world. Mature souls look inward and start playing the inner game because they know there's more to existence than the game of life as winning the most goodies. And then there are old souls who are like elders, who are very aware they're finishing their time here. They don't want to make more karma and get stuck here longer, and they're working very deeply inside. Well, according to Michael in the Council of One, this planet is predominantly young and baby souls. We see the game of the world. It's a young soul game, grubbing for money and power, and everything that goes with that. They say we're on the verge of transitioning. A balance is going to shift where the majority of the souls are mature souls. They say this is a significant 
phenomenon on any planet where it occurs because it's a shift from looking outwards and being competitive to looking inwards and becoming more cooperative and taking care of everybody. So just as Gordon seems to say we're at like 11.59 on that clock ready to click over, the Council of One is saying we're ready to shift from a young soul planet to an old soul planet. This can be seen in our politics. Many of the Republicans are baby souls. Donald Trump is a young soul. He's got the money because he's playing that game, but it's a very selfish game because he's not looking inside. Bernie and Hillary are mature souls, and they have an attitude of, we need to take care of everybody. We're all in this together. We need to take care of everybody. So again, we're right on this crux of seeing a transition from a very outward-directed, competitive, young soul world to a mature soul world where we all start to take care of everybody. The last metaphor I'd like to share is understand a way to understand third, fourth, and fifth dimension using the metaphor of the states of water. We know water exists as ice, as liquid, and as steam. It's the same substance, H2O, but it's in entirely different states and different energy levels. We can compare 3D to ice. It's frozen. Our consciousness is frozen. We tend to see people and objects as discrete and separate and unchangeable. There's an awful lot of duality and polarity here, opposition, contradiction. Like frozen in ice, our consciousness is relatively frozen like ice. The astral plane is like the state of water. It's more fluid. You melt ice and it starts to flow. Well, as we all know, because we spend our dreams and our between lives in the astral, things morph and we take it for granted. Right, a tennis racket turns into a guitar and then flies off up into the sky. We don't think twice because reality and consciousness are malleable. It's worth noting there's also polarity and duality on the astral plane. It's less concentrated, it's more subtle, but it still exists there. There are very dark, malevolent forces on the lower astral. We can meet them in nightmares if we're unfortunate. Well, even on the seventh level of the astral, which is like a heaven to us, there's still subtle levels of polarity and duality opposites. Now, following the water analogy, the fifth dimension is like steam. You put enough heat into water and it rises into the air. It's got more kinetic energy and it's buoyant. And the fifth dimension is like that, having more energy. But the huge difference that's really impossible to comprehend for us is that there's no polarity in the fifth dimension. There's no duality. There's no opposition. Everything is seen as one. Hard to comprehend for us schooled in 3D oppositional polarities. I think that's a good amount for now. How do you think? Yes? Thank you. Good time. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Peter. Um, I'd like to say a few words about my process and the symptoms. In a way, I got to 5D, the person who became my 5D guide and healer, because I had physical problems. I had chronic fatigue that got worse and worse and worse, and I hit the wall and could not function. So I started working with Susanna Red Elves, and it was a lot of lifestyle issues. I was creating my own physical imbalance by lifelong lifestyle choices. And 
she put it to me kind of clearly because my blood sugar was very high. I had to cut out all carbohydrates, no bread, no rice, no corn, no crackers, nothing like that. I couldn't tolerate it. I felt very motivated to do it. It wasn't as difficult as you might think because my mother has diabetes and I didn't want to go there. So I was really motivated to do that. Lost about 30 pounds without having that as an intention. I just want to keep alive, but the weight fell off when I stopped the carbs. Well, the hard part for me was when it turned out my pancreas could not tolerate alcohol. Imagine being an Irish musician, <laughs> unable to tolerate alcohol. Will I ever play again? Well, yes, I'm still playing. But that was hard. It took will. It took will to break these old habits. We're all creatures of habit. We're indoctrinated by our families, our schools, our culture, and a lot of it is really life-denying and life-destroying. And as Meg said, I have a similar experience. I like to watch TV to relax. I try to have my couple of shows that I tape and cut out the commercials, but more and more, I can't watch stuff. It's just too, too horrific. Thank God for Saturday Night Live. You can turn it on and get a laugh and get some relaxation. But part of this ascension process, we have to let go of the ballast. We have to have the willpower and the ter determination to release old habits that no longer serve us. Great, thank you. And actually, that's my next question, because we just throw out this term, fifth dimension. We're at fifth dimension new paradigm shift. I mean, that's a big reality shift. And we all have experienced it in many different ways. We all have studied it. And I'd really like to discuss it and ex have you explain what it is and how it relates to the ascension process from your perspective. Peter teaches it in community, so really explain this fifth dimensional phenomenon and how it really affects us, the ascension process, and what it really means to us now. One of the core practices that I engage in, because practices help us build will and extend consciousness, Coming from the Council of One, their primary practice is called the unified field. In this model of consciousness, we have seven chakras in the body and seven above the head. They're there all the time, but they're latent unless we pay attention to them. Each of our internal chakras, unless we're unified, is like a different subpersonality with a different agenda. I'm going to express power, I'm going to express creativity, I'm going to express love. They can work at loggerheads to each other unless they're unified. By learning to unify these fields, these chakras, it's really very simple. It's just done through intention and working with light. We bring all these higher chakras online and make them available. Higher chakras, emotional body, mental body, spiritual body. The fifth chakra is, the, I mean, the fifth dimension is the eleventh, right? And then there's the sixth dimension and the seventh, and then source. We can learn to navigate these very simply because they're part of who we are already. It's just that we forgot. But with this technique, we can unify them all bring them online, and experience them. In a unified field, my 5D guides are right here with me and I feel them. Right? And I tap into the source. It's kind of incomprehensible, but there's a unique energy from there that's very undeniable. Powerful techniques are essential. The last thing I'd like to say about the unified field is what's intriguing is that 
One simple way to tell if we're in a unified field, the object is to be there all the time because then we're containing all these potentials and they can all harmonize and work together. If you are worried about the future, you're not in the unified field. If you're fretting about something in the past, you're not in the unified field. It's a very sharp barometer to think about nothing, right? If I'm doing well, there's a new talent to be cultivated. Don't jump into the future and don't go in the past. Just be in the present moment in this body that includes all these seven chakras and all the higher ones in one glorious unified expression. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Deborah. Yeah to acknowledge the panelists here and have them briefly share how you can reach them if you want more information, if you want it, um, their books, their classes, or whatever's going on. So